Yo. What is going on, everybody? <laughs> All up, my everyone? book flipping friends. We have got <laughs> an exciting live call with you today. And we're going to be breaking down something new, something unique. Some of you guys who are in our inner circle and you follow myself, Victor, Joji closely, then you're already you know, probably on to this, but this is something that is very new. It's a new opportunity. You know, we call it kind of like gold mining. It's the gold rush. We call it with books. Reminds me of almost back in like the 2013 days, 2014 days with books, because what these guys have created, not only from a development standpoint, but from an actual six figure book selling standpoint is huge. I am so excited about this. So, uh, you know what, Joji, Victor, do you mind introducing yourselves? Share with everybody who you are, what's your experience selling on Amazon and books? And uh, and then we'll you know jump right into things. Yeah, I'll go really quick and then Victor, you can go after me. So Sounds what's good. up guys, my name is Joji. I have a YouTube channel where I teach people how to sell books. I'm actually a high school teacher and uh, a six figure Amazon online book arbitrage seller that's a mouthful what it means is you know both victor and i we specialize on uh, in finding books on amazon that are actually below their true market value and then we buy those books and then simply resell them for what they have sold for historically and then make a profit and the reason why i had to do that steve is because you know i'm a high school teacher so i have a nine to five and then i also have a son so there's no time to thrift there's no time to go out to library sell so uh, most of my, oh, pretty much all my sourcing is done between 10.30 p.m. and about 1 a.m. in the morning. And that's my source. I, I mean, the good thing about Amazon, Victor, is Amazon's open 24 hours a day. That's there's right. no, uh, you know, there's no closing at night or 7 p.m. or whatever it is that Goodwills are. But yeah, that's that's me. I'm a teacher. I have a YouTube channel. I have a bookseller. Yeah. And and I, I know we're all humble guys, but just for the folks who don't know you, can you share how many books you sold last year and... Yep. Uh, if you want to share your profit or anything because Absolutely. i know you share in our groups behind the scenes if you're comfortable yeah so i've sold over four thousand books last year on amazon and almost every single one of those was purchased on amazon and resold on amazon my average buy buy uh, buy cost was right around 17 dollars per book shipped and my average sales price was 68. so i did two hundred ninety seven thousand dollars in revenue but the big number is really well how much did i make i made a hundred thousand dollars in profit and what that allowed me to do was actually take all of my teaching income and invest it in the stock market. So I maxed out my IRA, my 403B, my 457B. And um, what's crazy is, you know, it's gotten to the point where my school, they mail me my checks. They pay 26 cents to mail me a check for $0. And that's because I just invest it all. And the, the HR people think I'm crazy, dude. They're just like, yeah. what are you like? Are you, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, so anyway, it's an incredible opportunity. I made more money selling books on Amazon last year than I did as a, you know, as a high school teacher in my seventh year. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's awesome. And all from, all from our house, right? That's, that's yeah. the kind of cool thing. We just got to use our laptop and that's it. But anyway, yeah. my name is uh, Victor Gallegos. I've been selling books for now six years. I, I, I kind of just introduced myself as a, I've sold millions of dollars of books, but this last year I sold over $500,000 of, uh, of books, uh, about 9,800 or so books. Um, and I profited about $150,000. So I, I really killed it last year. Um, I really focused in on books and again, all from my house, I'm not touching any inventory. So this is kind of crazy. Cause when I tell people I'm a bookseller, they think I have a massive amount of books in my house or that I'm lugging books back and forth. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, I'm, I'm just buying books online and selling them back online. Like, like it's, it's just a really cool opportunity. Anyone can do it. And, and as Steve was saying earlier today, like you can do this on vacation. You can go anywhere in the, in the world and sell this type of inventory. As long as you have a laptop, you can go in 2 a.m., go buy some books and send it to a prep center and, and get that sent off like that. So um, so me and Joji have been doing this for years and, and yeah. we were we, we just tried it after after we started to do so well. We wanted to go out and just start helping people. And, and we, we focused on, you know, kind of like some Facebook groups and, and discord and stuff like that to try to help them. But we realized that like, if we were able to build a software, we would help them even more because, because Keepa can help you source, but like with our software, it's basically, it's, it's almost virtually uh, impossible to lose right? that we made that software that good. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I got two important announcements. Well, actually one important announcement. And then I want to shout some people out in the sure. comments. For folks who stay until the end, we'll probably be here for what, about an hour or so, maybe yep. a little bit longer. Good. I'm going to choose two winners, okay, at the end of this call to win $50 cash directly to your PayPal, okay? So stay until the end 
and uh, it's going to be easy. It'll only take a, a second to be able to enter into it. So stay until the end. And then number two, let's shout some people out. Victor, um, Joji, I know there's a lot of people that I recommend in the comments. Feel free to shout out the folks because we are live right now and we're going to be getting into the good stuff in about 60 seconds. First, The first comment was from Denise Yates, 12, 15 p.m. Before it even started, she said, Hey, Steve, thanks for the info. I cannot be on the call live, but I love you. And I love Bookmine in all caps, a gold mine for online book sourcing, exclamation point. Thank you, Reagan Prof, for providing viable info as always. And then let's see, we've got Shane. Let's get the party started. We've got uh, Jan in the house. She's a book my member. Um, what's awesome is we also have uh, Pablo in the house. So Pablo, yes. Victor, you want to you want to spill the beans about Pablo? So what? <laughs> Pablo Pablo's awesome, right? He just kind of reached out to our community, and he's been in our community for a while. He's been buying and selling books and and doing really well. And and uh, he noticed that we we kicked off Bookmine, and he's like, well, hey, I can help you guys actually make a really good logo a really good uh, graphics, like te- you can have like a graphics team behind you if you want it and and for, and totally free because you've been helping out the community so long, you've been helping out me so long. And so yeah, these these hats, this logo is because of him. So there, there's a shout out right there. Pablo thank, right thank there. You, Pablo. Yeah. In the website, if you guys go to the book, my website, it is incredible. It, it's amazing it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's all thanks to Pablo. So thank you, Pablo, so much. We really appreciate it. Um, absolutely incredible. So Pablo is here. He's also a BookMind member and he's been using book my i mean he's been sourcing for a while right he's been yeah. in victor's group the, the funny thing is bob he's been a book my member for a while he said this better be good you're interrupting my book mind session <laughs> yeah so, and, and people are buying you know 20 30 books a day from this and they're like i got an hour so so if you have an hour you can buy 30 books on book mine pretty yeah. easily so let's jump into it guys let's um, go Joji or Victor, if uh, one yeah. of you guys want to get your screen share up and running, essentially yeah. how this is going to go, everybody, is we are going to give you a full entire breakdown of the new software that Joji and Victor created. Now, the goal of this is to add value. We're not here to, you know, pitch you and, you know, throw right. an offer down your throat. We only want this for folks who are big booksellers. You want to scale your business because what right. they've created is very innovative. It's not like, because there's other softwares out here who, can help you to buy books from Amazon, a flip on Amazon, but what they've created is completely different. And put a one in the comments. If there's any book mine users right now, put yeah, a please. one if this software is completely different. It's not like, you know, there's been apples out there for the last five years and they just built another apple. This is like a, yeah. com- this is like a tropical fruit. It's very, very unique. I don't do a lot of these videos, you know, repping softwares and different things. Cause many times they're all just copycats. This is completely different and unique. So oh. yeah, we've already got a bunch of people. We got Matt, Nathan, Matt, Kevin, Kevin, yeah, Bob. Got, and Bob. And yeah. I'm also going to let everybody yeah. know, um, as an affiliate, I, you know, I'm not a owner of yeah. book mine, at least not yet. Hoping because you know, <laughs> um, I believe in it so much. Yeah. Um, I am an affiliate. I want to be transparent, which means if anyone joins through the link in my comments, I do get a uh, a little bonus commission. Yeah. But I put together a really special little bonus offer. Plus, if you go through the link down below. Um, you'll actually get $30 off your first month. Okay. So if anyone's already joined, they're like, Oh man, I wanted to get it. Hit me up. I'll, I'll hook you up with the bonuses and stuff to make everybody happy. Cause you know, we love all the book mine users. So you can check out the link down below, but let me pass it off to Joji. And yeah, let's do it, man. Joji, let's go. What's, what's, what's so great is, so one of the comments is, uh, I was always disappointed with eFlip. Is this any different? Um, just, just sit and watch and I think you'll be, I think you, oh, you're going to be mind blown. Right? It's, it's completely yeah. different. It, it's, right. it's, it's like, that was like 2016, 2017 type of, uh, right. of information. And we've really taken it down, up of like, we've upgraded it so much that it does. It's not even in the same category. It's not, it's a one-on-one yeah. and right. uh, guys, can we give a round of applause for Pablo? Pablo is the one who made this happen. Look how incredible this looks. The new gold yeah. rush is here. The most powerful A2A book sourcing software yet. I mean, just look how incredible the graphics are here. So, I mean, you can go to our website. We'll obviously use the link down below, right? So, so yeah. Steve, um, so we can support Steve as well. But what makes BookMine different? The main thing is that we try to find books that are actually below their market value. And that's actually pretty difficult to do because there's like 95 million books in Amazon. Roughly, we're able to find right around like 3,000-ish books that are below their market value based upon recent historical sales. And you might think like a 3,000 is a lot, but relative to 95 million, it's actually not that many books, but still 3,000 books is a lot of books to potentially buy. But anyways, we're going to go into how it works with BookMind score and supply meter. 
and, and such and such. But this is what the actual software looks like. And yeah, I mean, Bookmine, we've got a ton of different, uh, you know, uh, traits. The first thing is a Keepa graph, which kind of helps you just with, you know, a quick glance, try to see if you can find a book that's undervalued, right? And so we on our YouTube channel have a bunch of tutorial videos walking you through like how you can get proficient at Keepa. Because at the end of the day, even though we are trying to essentially take you out on a fishing boat to the best fishing place, right? You still have to kind of throw your line out there. You're still going to have to be the one to fish and you still have to be able to read a keeper graph. And so that's why we made that resource available for you for free. But anyone here who is proficient at reading keeper graphs can already tell that if you just look at like these first three keeper graphs and you look at the current use price today relative to past historical sales, meaning looking at that use price with sales rank drops, you can pretty easily tell that this book is below what its actual market value was in the past. So now, now, now Joji, let me cut yeah. you off really quick because mm -hmm. I'm a new user myself. And when right. I first logged into this, I was very confused. Like obviously you guys yeah. have developed it. Let's, let's just start from square one. Sure, do it. What is this software actually doing? Because there's other softwares out there that would compare like the Amazon merchant price to FBA. Right. But I only see one picture, a keep a no. chart and then a use price. So break it down. What is this doing? Is this looking for books that have dropped in value on Keepa and it's just showing you the book and you have to buy it? Because I don't see what to sell it for. I don't see, you right. know, the sales rank. I don't see any of that information. Yeah, that's a really great question. I think the first thing, let's just look at the first book. Let's just open the Keepa graph here. What we're trying to do is find something below what it normally sells for. So, for example, to today's price, if we go back to Bookmine, it's a, this is, by the way, the all-in price. This is with shipping included. It's $27.85. If we look at today's current price and then look in the past, Steve, what we want to find are books that sold for more than that, like significantly more for that. So if we just go back to the last textbook season, let's say in January, and we look at the lowest use price of this book, basically it was always in the 50s with multiple sales and drops, and then even up to the 80s at the tail end of the, of the textbook season at 83. So think about it, like this is a book that was selling in the, in the 50s and, and also up to the 80s, but now it's significantly below that, it's at 26 bucks. Not only that, if you go back even further back in time, you can see that this book for pretty much the whole last year, the lowest price you could have bought it for on Amazon with the exception of maybe like two weeks here in June was like 70 bucks. And this book actually has sales rank drops, which means actually selling. So you're right, eFlip, Zen Arbitrage, Master Book Flipper, or we'll just say the other sourcing softwares, their, their goal is to find books that have a big differential in price, but between the lowest use price, the, the merchant fulfill price and the FBA buy box price. That's not what we're trying to do because that's exploiting the buy box. And while that could work, sometimes it's not a sustainable long-term business model because inherently, Steve, you're not buying anything undervalued. The only way you're making money that way is just exploiting this idea of someone having a prime subscription and wanting to get it in two days rather than wait a week. What we're actually trying to do is find a book that has like never been cheaper. It's like historically super low relative to what has sold in the past. And all you need to do is buy it at that historically low price and sell for what it has historically sold for. Is that making sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So what your software is essentially doing is it's looking on Amazon for the merchant sellers because on Amazon there's merchant sellers and then right. there's FBA. Typically the merchants are gonna be quite a bit less expensive. So your software is looking on Amazon yeah. right. through the merchants. Is it looking at FBA sellers as well or only merchants? It yes. is both. Yeah, it's yep. both. It's just the, whoever, whoever is the lowest price. Whoever's the lowest price. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, just think so, we're trying to get a good deal. That's what we're trying to do, snag. It's a good deal. So, so it's looking for a good deal. Whereas previously, like you were mentioning, the other softwares, which you could still make money with these other softwares, the issue that I found, you have to be really, really careful because if you exploit the buy box and there's a huge gap yeah. between merchants yeah. and FBA, what happens when a new FBA seller comes in and prices it towards more towards the merchant price, then you get a reprice to follow it. So then you have price tanking or right. say, for example, you know, you have a car for sale and you've got it listed for 40,000 because there's nobody else listing it for 40,000. But if you look in Kelly blue book and it's sold for 25,000 in other areas, like it's just sitting, sitting, sitting. Well, why isn't yeah. selling? Because it's not worth 40,000, but exactly. I'm one in town, maybe you could get the sale for somebody desperate, right. but I think, on a long term, like a, on a scalable basis, you're you're asking for trouble if you're not like really an expert with Keepa with the other softwares. Yeah, exactly. So so our our software data mines Amazon, right? So all 96 million books, it goes in and looks at it once an hour. 
and looks at, at books that are actually have a potential of selling, uh, you could buy today and actually make a profit off of them. Um, you can kind of consider it as like the ultimate uh, leads list. Like yeah. all, every book on here has, we've already done extensive research on it. They're, right. they're, we're not at a hundred percent there, but we're saying that most of these books are like, we're, we've done 90% of the work. All you have yeah. to do is click on the book, check it out. And more than likely it, it's, it's a, it's a winner. So, so that first book we just looked at, that was what, buy it, buy it, uh, $30 or 20, 27. $27 and, and probably sell it at 80. So that book yeah. alone, you're already doubling your money off of just the first book we looked at. Right. And, um, I'm, I'm sure you might have more questions, but the way that our software is also very smart is that we take into consideration things like, well, how many sellers are there now relative to the past? Because we all know like simple supply and demand, Steve, right? If there's a lot of supply for something, then you would think that the prices of that thing should go down. So for example, this book that we just looked at, you actually notice that on our supply meter, we actually say normal supply. And so what that tells you is that if we look at this book's current used offer count, which just means if we look at how many people are selling it today and then look back in the past at how many people are selling it, it's not really any different. It's right around the same. And the reason why that's so amazing is because in the past at this similar offer count, at this similar sort of supply, this book was selling in the 60s, the 70s and the 80s, and now it's completely undervalued. There's not very many books out there like that, which is why this is a book we want to show you because we're like, hey, here's a book that's its current price is significantly below what it normally sells for. But not only that, the current supply or the current number of people selling it isn't substantially larger either. So that's really important. Yeah, I think that's genius. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes that folks make. And even myself, when I'm out thrifting and whatnot, unfortunately, Scout IQ, Scoutly, the scanning apps, you know, it doesn't really tell you that data unless you really dive in. Like, actually, matter of fact, unless you use Keepa, Scout IQ or Scoutly is not going to tell you if the number of sellers have doubled or tripled. Right. over the last month or two. And uh, I mean, sometimes the price can stay pretty stable, but if you're, if the number of sellers have two to three X, that thing's going to come rushing down eventually. All it yep. takes is one yep. person to set right. that, to set that ball in motion. And once it starts rolling and the repricers start attacking each other, each other, that's why people, you know, they, they sometimes are like, I have 500 books and it's not selling. Well, you probably, you're trying to exploit these big FBA gaps. You're not looking right. at the number of sellers. So, I mean, I could go on and on, but. Yeah, you know, Victor, that, I, have a, I, have a, I have a question for Victor. So can you explain yeah. a little bit? So kind of extending what Steve was saying, can you talk about live live data versus historical data, especially with the scanning apps and needing to look at Keepa, like for people who do library sales thrift stores? Yeah, so when you look at just a snapshot, that's not really telling you much. It's really leaving you, uh, at a disadvantage because that's just today, right? So if that book just recently sold, that 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 the the sales rank will go down to a couple hundred thousand. But maybe the rest of the time it's been at a few million. So right. this is actually not a book you'd probably want to buy. But the you know on your scanning app it'll come green and you'll you'll buy that book and 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 go right. on and try to list it. But our software actually goes in and looks at the historical value of that book, tries to tries to figure out the intrinsic value of the book. And then right. if it's it's lower than the intrinsic value, then we show it to you. Um, I, I think it's I think it's a, a pretty amazing. And so one thing we can do real quick, and uh, uh, Steve is we could like even go to our filter supply meter, and we could like let's say let's only look at extreme oversupply. So we actually would show books here that are below their historical market value, but we would warn you and say, hey, this is an extreme oversupply, so you probably wouldn't want to buy this, but maybe I mean you can still look at it, and you can kind of see. If we look at since textbook season, you can see how this off account has just been on the steady rise and actually isn't necessarily too bad. But the thing is, when we start seeing a large increase in the number of sellers, you would you should expect the price to come down because pretty much all those sellers are using repricers. And the more people that are selling the book, the more you know they're willing to take the price down and get the sell. So, you know, you could also do the reverse, which is we can say, let's only look at stuff in like extremely short supply or short supply as well. And then you're going to find books that are not only you know, below their current market value, but also on short supply. So for example, this first book, you might just look at the keeper graph and go, oh, well, this yeah, it looks undervalued. Like yeah. we see sales in the thirties and then now it looks like it's in a, around 11. And we actually say that this is close in price, meaning it's current, current price that you could buy it for is a little bit under its historical value, but because it also is in short supply and it's also the lowest ever price, we then positively weighted even more. And that's why it shows up on Bookmind. So you know, if we take a look at this book and you look at, let's say, since, um, you know, beginning of January, we're up to offer count of like 
16 to 18. Now we've all of a sudden gotten down to an off count 10. So we went from 18 to 10. Like that's actually good. This this off count is going down. The number of sellers on the listing is going down. That's pretty substantial. Which is really rare, right? You rarely get an actual uh, less people on a listing, but yet the, also the price is going down. Usually right. less people on a listing, the price goes up. But it, it, you know, because there's so many books to go and look at every once in a while, there's this anomaly and we show it on, on Bookline. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm going, but look at this book here. I mean, this, this is a book that looks like just an absolute winner to me, right? If you look at the keyword graph, a bunch of heartbeats, a bunch of sales rank drops there. This book is selling the use oh, price $7? to me almost like it's always in the thirties. And then it just dropped in price. It's 733 all in shipping. It's a good price. It's in short supply. And we also think it's very likely to sell out. So the way that we're even smarter about this is we don't just look at the number of used offers and look at you know how often it's selling. We actually put the two metrics together and we basically say, hey, if you just look at like the last, let's say 30, you know, last 30 days and you look at the number of sales and drops. So if we look at the last month, I mean, you could count them. There's probably like 15 or 20 sales and drops, maybe even more. And then if yeah. you look at the current offer count, which is about nine, you're like, okay, well, in the last 30 days, this book has sold like 20, 25 times, but there's only nine people on the listing. So how could that book not sell out? So here's a book that is just extremely rare. It's a book that's very cheap relative to its historical price. It's an extremely short supply and this likelihood to sell out is very likely based upon how many people are currently offering it for sale versus how many people have actually sold the book in the past. And you can actually see that a book my members already bought this because this dropped in price from $26 down to seven. And you can see it was there for about 15 minutes. So we just updated because again, book mine updates every hour. So just updated. Someone saw that and was like, I got to buy that immediately. So so let's let's take us into the software from scratch and yeah. let's have a little bit of fun for you know 15 minutes or so let's do some right. live sourcing and what i want you to do if you guys are open to it is go through some books so the viewers can you know put themselves uh in the shoes of a user and let's go source together let's find some deals and let's analyze and let's move a little bit quick but let's analyze okay. what we would buy it for what we would sell it for and we could start writing down some potential profits and whatnot right. and let's and do i it. do want to mention the cool thing about this software is it updates every hour yeah, right. so it's kind of like you know it's like i hate to say the casino but it's like you're you're playing in this game and sometimes you win maybe you don't find a ton but guess what the game restarts every single hour Right. which is which is exciting so let's i'm gonna stop talking i want to see you yeah. go in there and i'm gonna be writing down some notes of some things and flips and maybe some potential profits so people could see how this is used in real time right. if you're open to it easiest yeah. way to source is with book mind score picture the higher the score the more likely we think the book is profitable it doesn't mean that if you have a high score that it is going to be profitable and it doesn't mean just blind buy it and don't look at it it just means we think that this is a book that's likely to be profitable so for example Let's just take the second one only because this one above is a textbook and we've already gone over a textbook. Let's go over a non-textbook or at least actually this would be uh, what's actually we've coded as a high school book here under book type. But if we look at current price, $77, good price, also at the lowest ever on its keeper graph, you can actually see that it just recently dropped in price here. So, Victor, what are you seeing with a book like this? Oh, it's awesome. So, I mean, this is a high school book, which is also really great about our software. Other softwares out there don't actually type books, but right. we've told you, hey, this book is actually a high school book, which, which means that there's a ton of demand, usually July and August, and right. it really spikes during that time. So, so check right. out this, right? That that book is what in the over $200, $200 there, $200 the, the two years ago, one year ago, also last year was right around $200. And right now we're at $73. Yeah, just so, drop. So this is just so simple, right? Buy it for $73, sell it for $200, which has yeah. happened in the last three years. And that, so is, that is also that is double your money with right. just buying one book here. Right. And that and that also is um, a lot of money for someone to be spending. So you right. don't necessarily need to spend that much. But I mean, like I said, we're looking at the sales rank drop in July. So this is a stereotypical high school textbook. High school books, mm -hmm. you know, pop during August, you know, July, August, September, not in January because they're they're not college textbooks or high school books. But yeah, that's a book that just dropped in price. And if we were to do some, um, you know, seventy three fifty seven, we'd be thinking of probably selling this, Victor. I mean, I would say probably right around like one sixty to one seventy five. Yeah, one seventy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'd be looking at. Okay, uh, so that's good. Let's we just analyze this uh, book, The Way of the Wolf. That would have been a book. That again is already gone because someone noticed how great it was. But that's a book that I probably would have bought for seven thirty three. That's what yeah. the all price was, and probably selling in the thirty five to forty range is what I would think there. And that's uh, well over one hundred percent ROI. Right. Yeah. Very good. Let's look at this book here, this macroeconomics for today. 
So we can see that here's a book that the whole year has been selling in the 70s, even up to the 90s with sales rank drops. But again, remember, if you guys look at the offer count below, this is actually a warning sign. And this is something you guys will learn with experience. Like as the number of used offers increases substantially, that's that's a red flag. And so even though you're seeing the price come down, this book still definitely has potential. But you also have to understand that because there's going to be more supply going into this uh, upcoming textbook season, you're not going to be able to sell it for nearly as much as you were in the past. But factually, this is a book that's very undervalued relative to what it has sold for in the past. But again, oversupply, we're just letting you know, hey, just be careful about this book. That's all. So yeah. let's see. Let's still see a good we... book. You could still make money off of it. Yeah, you can yeah. still make money yeah. off of it. Uh, let's see if we can find, so by the way, under book type here, you can find all year round books. So you can also find college books. So let's look at all year round books that have a book line score of seven to 10 and we can go there. And it's so, pretty simple. All your book, all year round books are books that sell all year round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can look at this book right here called open source intelligence. So it looks like here's a book again, that has plenty of sales rank drops in the fifties, even up into the eighties, even up into the low nineties. And you can see it's starting to undergo a repricing war. And Victor, what's a repricing war, if you don't mind? Uh, so basically, two or three mega sellers have gone, um, have put in their repricer in, and actually are all, they're both all three of them are fighting with each other and bringing the price down until until their copies sell. So right. it it's um, it, you know unfortunate for them, but great for us, right? So they're they're going to sell the book much cheaper. We're going to be able to buy it and actually sell it at its intrinsic value. Yeah. So we can probably see that here. So it looks like we have four or five uh, of the larger textbook sellers here that are pretty low and they're driving this price down. And then after that, it goes back up to the forties uh, in the mid forties, which is kind of where it's been selling for. But like, for example, if you just look at this book, the last three sells, the cheapest price you, you could have bought the book for is 42, 45, 45, 47. So we're looking at a book that's right around 22. It's been selling in the forties. And again, in the past has been selling upwards as high as 80 as well. So now, what would your plan be here, Georgie, if you were to buy it? Right. So this would be a book that, again, I'd want to leverage historical sales data. And so you obviously want to pay attention to like how many FBA sellers on the listing, because at the end of the day, you are you know competing against FBA sellers. So you can see we've got two copies here at 40 and then we go up to 48. You know, my goal would probably be able to you know want to sell it between, let's say, $50 and $70. I'd probably want to be a little bit underneath where it even historically has sold for in the past, only due to the fact that there are quite a few FBA offers. Now, if there were no FBA offers, then I definitely would be much more willing to go a little bit higher. What about you, Victor? Yeah, yeah. So twenty, I'd buy it at twenty-two and sell it for fifty. And again, yeah. that's uh, probably around right around a uh, fifty percent ROI. Yeah, so it's right yeah, around forty so, percent ROI so I, for that one. I I noticed you're not looking at the buy box used price whatsoever. So, right. you know, what what advice would you give to the users? Uh, excuse me, to the uh, the viewers when they're pricing their items because we're so used to pricing at where the competitors are FBA. So I I, I notice you don't even have that clicked at all. Do you never yeah. you, you never use that? Um, I often do have it on. I actually just took it off just to make reading the graph a little bit more simple for someone who's kind of uh, maybe newish to Kiba. But the point here is that you shouldn't have to rely on an, on the buy box to make money. That's the point of BookMine. You should be buying a truly amazing deal that you could sell for like the lowest use price normally and make money. So while we are not saying don't you know try to get a little bit extra money if you're in the buy box, we, we should be making our decision in a conservative way, right? Because there is risk if you're going to buy any product online and try to sell online. But we want to minimize our risk as much as possible. So if you cannot be profitable, you know, buying this book today and then selling it at what it normally sells for, then it's a book I wouldn't recommend buying because then you have to rely on trying to inflate a buy box or try to get this, you know, higher buy box price than normal in order to sell it. So it's just the nature of us being a little bit more conservative, if that makes sense. Yeah, our, our margins are so high, we don't necessarily need to worry about the FBA price. I mean, you know, last year I sold, like uh, I said, right right under 9,800 books and and I didn't sell five of them. So like those five, I actually had to, had to, had to um, destroy those uh, five books on Amazon. But the rest I sold because you kind of just are really have really great safety margins here that right. you don't necessarily need to worry about the FBA prices. Right. So here's another example of a book that just showed up. So the current all in buy price on this is $10.64. And again, if you kind of just look at the last three months worth of data, you can understand why this came up on BookMine. We've got a couple of sales rank drops right on 15, but then previous to that, we had $24, we had them at $25, we had a sales rank drop at 40. We had a few more up here at 50, a couple down here at the beginning, uh, or kind of the middle of January textbook season 
right around the 15 and then up to 30 as well. So again, we're just trying to leverage like what is today's price versus the past? And if today's price is significantly cheaper than the past, then we want to show it to you because it's a book that could potentially be undervalued. And so one thing that I also really love about this book, Victor, is that it's clearly going to be a college textbook because of the yeah. fact that in August, September and in January, there right. is an increase in sales rank. There's kind of this stereotypical use, use sort of pattern. But what I love about it, Victor, is what's the offer count today? Can you see that? What's the offer count today? Yeah, like 20, what, 26? 20, 26, 27. Yeah, and at the right. same time, one year ago, it was actually 47. So that's awesome. That's a really good sign that this is, yeah. It's got, it's got about half the supply as it had a year ago. And so coming up into, actually this has a multiple textbook season that has kind of like an April and a June, like a smaller one. This is a book that that I think personally could do really well. And so this is where, you know, this is probably one that's a little bit, you gotta be a little bit more advanced to, to get into this one in terms of like understanding like the difference in um, supply and offer count, you know, between today and yeah. this time last year. but. As you guys get better at, and you start selling hundreds and then thousands of books, like you'll start to notice these patterns. You know, you can see the buy box price on, on this is in the 35, 39, yeah. and then it goes up to the 40s. But this is a book for me personally, Victor, I'd be all in at like 1060. Oh, I, I definitely buy it because of the used offer count is really that low. Right. And I'm happy that Bookline showed it to us. That is right. definitely a book I would buy just because of that uh, lower used offer count. And I am I mean, this year the, the in August, that book is definitely going to go much higher than it has in the past because of the used offer count being that low. Because yeah. you can even see in the past August, I mean, it did get up into the 60s, right? Yeah. So yeah, most of the sales happen in like the 25 to 30 range. But then at the tail end of the season, you've got a bunch of sales on drops in the 60s. So yeah, I agree. If Think about it logically, guys. If you're going into this next textbook season with half the amount of people selling it, then you would expect that this upcoming season should be at least as good as it was last time, if not even better, right? So right. here's a good example of a book that I would say conservatively you'd want you'd be selling at 35. I think that's a that's like a given, but reality you could probably even go up to like 45, even up to 49, and that's where kind of the money on a book like that comes from. So. Awesome book there, show by Bookmine. We have a question from Vicky yep. Henderson, Joji. Yeah. Sorry to What's, interrupt you. No, not at all. Can you filter by condition? I use a prep center, Vicky says, and I don't mm -hmm. buy acceptable books. Mm, good question. So right now, uh, yeah, we don't have a feature to to sort by condition. We're just going to show you what the the lowest current use price on Amazon is, and then you guys are going to have to go in a little bit further, and you guys are going to have to figure out. Okay, well, here's an acceptable condition copy or a good one, and the reason. Victor, what's the reason why we don't filter out acceptable copy books? Because there's tons of amazing acceptable copies, right? right. Most Goodwills, all their inventory are acceptable. So yeah. like, a, a, you know, a little like known secret is that most Goodwills are are actually really undergrading, undergrading their like books. So right. buy those those acceptable um, copies and they actually will come back to you in good and very good condition. I have thousands of books as proof that that's the case. So, so you're kind of missing out in not buying those acceptable uh, copies from Goodwill. And that's why we left it on here. Again, right. we're, we're both booksellers. So we wanted to make a software that actually helped booksellers. So. Right, absolutely. Katie reads, yeah, it's, um, I'm happy she's she's uh, watching us. I mean, she's yeah. uh, she's been a great YouTuber and um, you know, we, we've been recently contacting her. So, you know, actually soon we're, we're trying to do a book conference and we're hoping that she might come, so. Absolutely. Yeah, we and got big way, news to share with everybody, but uh, yeah. not today. But we yes, yeah, yeah. not today. Everyone, <laughs> behind the scenes. But we will be, or well, at least I will be interviewing Katie on my YouTube channel up here in the future. She's got a lot of value to add. And I actually just yes. recently, I don't even know how this happens. Like, how did the YouTube algorithm not show me Katie? I'm just like, you know, there's not very many booksellers, and Victor's like, oh yeah, there's Katie. Katie yeah, Katie's awesome. Yeah. And then I'm like looking at comment, like, how did I not get <laughs> content? So, anyways. I'm always looking to interview people in the book space, and I think Katie will be an awesome person. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, this next book that just came up on Bookmine has, has a Bookmine score of five. And again, you could look at the keeper graph and, and tell why this book showed up in Bookmine. I mean, its current price is $38. If you look at the keeper graph, the lowest use price, December, January, February, with plenty of sales rank drops, was in the $80 mark, 80 to 90 bucks. So if the current price is 38 today, but it was selling for 80 or 90, well, let's take a look at it. That's a book that we at least want to to see what's going on. So you can see, again, current prices in the 38s, and then you can see basically this whole year, this is a book selling in the 80s and 90s. So this is something that, again, you'd wanna like take a peek up on it, take a peek on Amazon, see what's going on over here. And you can actually see it looks like $38 is from a prime seller. So we get this question all the time, Victor, can you buy books from prime 
sellers from FBA offers to flip back on yeah, Amazon? Yeah, actually, yes, you can. Well, all you have to do is just have a uh, non-prime account, right? So right. I have a non-prime account. It's my wife's account. And I just go in there and use her account and buy from, from that prime seller if it happens to be the lowest price. Um, right. But again, most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's a merchant fulfilled. But when it is, I just log into my wife's account and buy it from there. And right. that's not against the uh, TOS of Amazon. So we're good there. Absolutely. Yeah. And so this is a great example of a book that's completely undervalued. I mean, you can just you can see it in there's multiple pieces of evidence. One of them is there's two offers at 38. Those people are on a repricing war against each other. And then it shoots up to 74. And that's actually much more realistic relative to past historical sales data. You know, if I look at look at it back on Keepa, again, you can see that the, the use price the whole year was north of 70. Like there's only one other time this year. And that was actually for maybe what uh four or five days in july when it was down at 49. other than that this book has always been north of 73 dollars and often has been much higher than that so again here's a good example of a book that you could buy from an fba seller obviously if you have a prime subscription you wouldn't take advantage of the two-day prime shipping so hop on over to a business account that doesn't have prime shipping now one little pro tip here is if you get the cart value over 35 dollars, which buying one or both of these books would do you actually qualify for free non-prime or standard shipping. So you could get free shipping on the book. It's just not going to come in two days. It's going to come seven to 10 days, which is kind of the standard shipping. So, um, right. Clearly an undervalued book. So that's right. something that we want. To I mean, it's you. pretty simple. You can see it on the chart, right? It's, right. it's, it's, a, it's at its lowest price point. It's been yep. in over a year. And, and you're going to be able to see that on most books. I mean, pretty much all the books that you're seeing are going to be books that currently today are significantly below what their normal selling price is. And um, that's an awesome thing. We've got, again, 3,000 books that have currently been mined in the last hour. And um, we, we just really have scratched the surface. There's so many other ways. So we were looking at bookmine score. We can also go by bookmine type. So like, let's say you want to source high school books. Victor, how many of your books that you sold last year do you think were high school books? Oh, very cool. Uh, out of 9,700, maybe at least 8,000 of them were high school books because they're, they're just such a great uh, category to sell. Right. Exactly. And so so we just typed in high school books and you can see that, you know, there's a there's a, a bunch of high school books that, that have showed up here and you can see the book type here is high school. And so all you really need to do is click on any one of these Keepa links and you'd want to expand the historical selling date of this book to, to years prior and see a pattern. So the first pattern you want to see is does mm -hmm. the sales rank improve dramatically during July, August? And you can kind of see over the last three years, even four years, that's true. The sales rank gets better. And the second thing is do you actually see the use price increase as a result? And then third, do you see the offer count dive at the same time? So like, for example, we look at this book over the last three years, you can see going into July, this was about $2 and then it got up to about 10 bucks. So not a major, a major uh, increase in price, but the sales ring improved. You saw the offer count dip. And then the next year, you can see we had a, a few less offers than the year before. And now we were getting into the use prices up into the twenties and you can see the used offer count. It's down, awesome, right? right? And then this previous year was actually great. You can see how, we're going into the season at two dollars. Then all of a sudden, this book, you know, half a month later is up to nineteen dollars, and at the tail end of the season, getting up to forty dollars. So this is a book that you know Victor really capitalizes on, and you can see again here's a book that is starting to get down to that price. It's probably going to be, um, let's see, it's actually eleven dollars uh, free shipping. So you probably would want to wait a little bit longer for it to get a little bit cheaper. But this is a book that Bookmine will show you as a as a seasonal book. This is something you should really consider potentially buying and and, and and I think we just got a question from Kelly here who asked us what are precautions to avoid uh, counterfeits and I think right. this is really awesome with with high school books and that's one of the reasons why I kind of really stayed right. with high school books is because there's virtually no issues with counterfeit books like so I went even virtually there's like around 3500 high school books that are tracked on book mine and so far we found two counterfeit books out of that whole group I've been selling for six years and I've never had a counterfeit complaint I've never had an IP complaint I've never been suspended all because mostly high school books. And again, you can source those books on Bookmine. So if that's one of your concerns, you can you can also just just source uh, high school books, but we also have a safe, not as safe. So right. as long as you check safe, basically the publishers that, that were doing test buys, you, you by just checking that off, those publishers like go away. Like you will only have the books that are currently on Bookmine that aren't being test by by the lawyers. So yeah. that's pretty awesome. And go ahead. And I want to be clear um, as well. So Victor and Joji, they use a prep center. This is essentially yeah. a third right. party warehouse that allows you to purchase items. You ship it to them and right. they will list it and ship it on your behalf. 
essentially there's a spreadsheet you put in your buy cost, a right. couple data points, but that is not necessary. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but we have someone, I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but we have someone in the comments getting a little worked up about the prep center. You don't need a prep center. Right. You can have items shipped to your house. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this disclaimer out for the people who are new, who think that they should just jump into this and use a prep center. Don't. You need to get things shipped to yourself at first. You need to learn the basics of books. You have to learn to master Keepa. Take it slow. You don't have to outsource this whole entire business in the first uh, 30 minutes of learning about the opportunity. I want to be, I'm not trying to be harsh, but you got to yeah. crawl before you walk. You got to walk before you run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go, go, going back to what Victor was saying about, and that previous comment about counterfeit books, because that is something that is of serious concern. So there is a feature up here uh safe not a safe and if you were to actually scroll down you can see we actually found at the bottom here if you can see where i highlighted we found 3179 books that we think have a high likelihood in this hour of being profitable but we have a feature called safe not a safe and essentially if you go ahead and, and just deselect not a safe it's going to get rid of the major textbook publishers mm -hmm. represented by o and z law firm that are doing test buys on your account so essentially it's getting rid of like pearson books and mcgraw hill books so if you're somebody who doesn't want to buy those books, you can do it. Now, with that said, the number one thing that you always need to do is you actually want to go to the Books Run Counterfeit Probability Check. So I actually have a bookmarked here under my bookmark bar. You can just type in Books Run, Book Counterfeit Risk Check. And all you got to do is type in the ISBN. You can actually get that right from the Keepa graph right above. So it's right up here in the Keepa link. You can go ahead and grab that, bring it over here, enter the ISBN, click check, say that you're not a robot. And then it's going to tell you the likelihood of that book being counterfeit. Now, just because it says unlikely doesn't mean it's not counterfeit. Just because it says highly likely doesn't mean that your copy you have is counterfeit. What it means is Books Run is a large buyback company. They've done a lot of data gathering and they've found that the books that are counterfeited most often are the ones that show up again and again and again. So this is a book that they don't have much history or even any history at all of having been a test bought book or a book that's counterfeit. So best practice, is you know definitely run your your textbooks you know ISBN through this. On the other hand, if you're looking for other seasonal books or books that you know are all year round books that are very unlikely to be counterfeit, you probably don't need to do that. But I I would definitely suggest that you do that as a you know just to be safe. All right, so. Joji. So I want to go into a a lightning round if we can, and then we can go back. We can go sure. back to normal programming. But yep. I want to hit you over the head with some of my questions Good. being a new user as well. Mm -hmm. um, so feel free to just answer them quickly and let's just run through these because um, I want to get through this. So number one, what's the best way to use this if you're brand new? Do you have to go in and choose all the different filters, gold meter, supply meter, sellout meter, Amazon out of stock, lowest, or do you, can you just literally out you of can, the box? Just you, can literally, you can literally just scroll and, and like, I'll put my word behind it and Victor does as well. Like pretty much, even if a book has a score of four, right? So we only show you book mine score of four to 10. The reality is that over 95 million books have a score of three or under. If a book has a score of four, there's a lot of things going for it positively. So literally the easiest way to get started is just start scrolling down and just looking at keeper graphs. Try to find a, a book that is a current use price that looks to be significantly below what it was selling for in the past with sales rank drops. I'd, I'd say that's the easiest way. I mean, if you want only one filter to change, book mine score. Just take this slider up here, show me books with a score of eight to 10. What is needed for a book to have a score of eight to 10? You can actually see why this is highlighted gold. That's crazy. You need a <laughs> yeah. lot of things going for it. You need it to be either a great price, you, and then you need at least one or two other things that are really positive about it. Like Amazon just went out of stock on the book, or the sellout likelihood is very high, or the current supply is very low. Um, so you can see that those books are highlighted yellow. And these are books that we would say, hey, you know, definitely go take a take a look at bo uh, books like this. Steve, so, if, if you move that from a seven to 10 and buy the whole list, you can't lose. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You literally can't. I mean, look at this. This is a book that's been selling for 170 the whole year. And then you can see it's now <laughs> down to 49.99. The, the offer count's 11. When this book was selling for 175, it was 11, 12, 8, 9, 10. I mean, at the 20, last 2,700 days, it's a book that, its lowest use price pretty much since 2018 has been $170. And all it, of a sudden, it's that simple because our because our software is that powerful. So it looks like, wait, so I just buy it there and sell up there? Yes. We, we, we worked behind the scenes to get it that powerful, which all you have to do now is look at that price just to be verified that that's correct. But buy right. at 50, sell for 175 off that right. off this book here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, and what, yeah. Go for it. A, another question I had was, are you still buying a book? And there were a couple comments. I apologize, everybody, mm -hmm. for missing it. Um, like, for example, Diane said, even though the newer edition is only at 49, this was from a book earlier, right. my ceiling is never close to the new edition price. I'm curious on the thought process around this. And this was a common question. If there's a newer edition out, could that be causing the price to tank? Um, are there things or mistakes to avoid in, in, in terms of that? Yeah, good question. What you'd want to do is establish like the textbook publishing cycle. So the easiest way to, to figure out the cycle is like a lot of textbooks, they'll have the actual year imprinted on them. Like a lot of nursing books will say, you know, ICD uh, 10, 2024, and then the previous edition is 2023 and the previous edition is 2022. That's a one year textbook publishing cycle. When you get books that get published that frequently, yeah, definitely a new edition comes out. Boom, that book's tanking in price literally that same year at the end of the year. But a lot of books have textbook publishing cycles much longer than that, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. And you could always just kind of, you know, take the title of that book. If, if today's new edition is the seventh edition, you could just put the same title in, put sixth edition in, put fifth edition in. You can kind of understand looking at textbook publishing cycles and you can kind of go back and look at those other editions and kind of match up. Like, how did this, you know, two editions ago, how did that one perform when the new edition had come out? And so you I, can- I, I, yeah. I think there's uh, two other, um, all differences here is that you can also do high school books and all your round books, right? So um, all your round books, even if there is a new edition, that book t won't tend to actually tank in price. And for sure, high school books won't tank in price if there's a new edition, because what happens with high school books is that 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 high school has bought that book for like 15 years. And, and by contract, they have to have that book for 15 years. So think of them as like a customer of ours for the next 15 years, because like, uh, students will lose the book, will burn the book, will will you know get it wet and and tear it apart, and then they have to go. Actually, the school district goes in and buys those uh, replacement books on Amazon, and we have those copies for them. So even if there is like four or five editions past that point, that school district still has to use that older edition, and that's why all high school books are actually pretty gotcha. cool. Yeah, yeah. It comes so, down to experience. Yeah, but but generally, yeah, there's yeah. tons of books that I'll buy full well knowing there's a new edition. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way to use this software? For example, you have to understand I'm coming from the eBay to Amazon flipping world right. where we sure. use some softwares that rely on having to refresh it every second. I feel like a, right. a freaking crackhead using it with this. Are you having to refresh every two seconds or do you want to go through the list or what's the best way to kind of utilize this? Um, you know, because it is refreshing every hour. Right. But it's not refreshing at minute 22, minute 27. It's Is it at every hour it refreshes? So you really have an hour to run through the whole list. You want to go for it, Victor? No, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so essentially every hour you're going to get an update. And the what's important to understand is that we're only going to show you books that have just recently changed the price. So, for example, you'll see there's a slider called number of days since last update. There might be a book that is still on Bookmine that changed its price maybe two or three days ago. But we're not actually going to show you it at the top of the feed. Like it's still going to be on Bookmine, but we won't show you at the top of the feed because it hasn't undergone like another price update. So what we really want to do is prioritize the books that have just seen a price update. Because if a book is below its historical value and it just had a price update, it's probably because it just dropped below even further its historical price. And so we want to show you that. Um, it, it goes from 96 million down to 300,000 down to 3,000. And we produce the 3,000 and give it and we push it out on Bookmine. Matter of fact, if Joe was, was to click refresh right now, uh, we would show books that were seven minutes ago that just uh, um, updated in price. So that's what's that's what's cool about our software is that every hour it's it's producing a whole new list of um, potential uh, books to purchase. And I, I think that's probably the game changing difference between our software versus any other software out there. Most other softwares are talking about updating once a day. So, so we really wanted to push the that level, and we, we really tried to do the, the the best we could. And we thought once an hour is probably as as, as good as we could get it. So, right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I've got quite a few students who are in the eBay to Amazon masterclass in my program who right. joined your guys's as well because there's always, you know, you want to yeah. be diversified. There's you know different products and opportunities. What are most of your users like? How are they using it? Are they using it just to buy like a book a day? Or, you know, I have a friend yeah. of mine who he has a goal of to buy 10 books a day with Bookmine with, right. you know, a $20 right. minimum profit. What do you usually see? What advice would you give to people, um, yeah. you know, to use this Absolutely. to make, make the most I mean, of it? 
this is a it's a premium software for a reason because it's premium. There's nothing else like it. There's other book sourcing softwares, but I would group those three together and then put Bookmine like in a league of its own. And you have to pay for it, right? Because at the end of the day, what we're doing is not cheap. Like what we're doing is actually very expensive to do, and it's also way smarter. And so, if we would really only recommend it to somebody who's a serious bookseller, like if you're actually thinking about doing this um, seriously and you're gonna be on Bookmine every day, there's no way you wouldn't get value from this because it comes down to about four dollars and thirty cents per day. By the way, if you guys use code Steve, you guys get thirty dollars off your first month, so be even less than that. But if you use it every day, you're basically paying right. four bucks to get access to literally thousands of books that are undervalued. So, you know, I we would, you know, I'm not here just to sell you on it. Like, you need to have capital to buy books. So, if you can't buy, you know, minimum five books a day using this, then maybe I would say wait and you know wait to build your capital. We have some other free resources on our YouTube channel showing you how to source books without Bookmine if you want, um, and build your capital. Get up there. But yeah, I would say. For somebody who's actually utilizing this well, they're using it every day, they're buying 10 books a day. And the thing is, they're, the quality of the leads we're showing you are so great that it, wouldn't, it shouldn't even take you very long to buy 10 books. And so what we find is most of our users actually, they, they spend short sessions on Bookmine because they buy all the books they need and they run out of money. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I guess it's a good problem to have, but at the same time, building your capital so that you can spend more money is really, uh, is really gonna help you scale long-term. Yeah, we've been telling members basically buy 10 books a day. Right, uh, that's that consistency is it. And if you do that, you're going to have a hundred thousand dollar year. So, yeah. so that's what we've been pushing. Uh, most of our members are, are been focusing on that in on that. We check in with them and they're buying more than 10, 10 books a day. So, we, we I think we're about to produce a uh, hundred sellers that are all making a hundred thousand dollars in revenue in, in a year. And I think that's pretty awesome. And what's the minimum profit that you would recommend? Because some mm -hmm. folks who come from the thrifting world might think, ah, oh, 10 bucks, I'm only making three or four bucks each. That's not really worth my time. But with, you know, online arbitrage, eBay to Amazon, Amazon to Amazon, that minimum profit can be a lot higher. So talk about what your yeah. average profit is that you like to see with these books off of book right. and, and the ROI to give people a better vision. Yeah, let's start with just what normal ROI is with other sources of, yeah. um, you know, sourcing. So we were just at Miami Sellers Conference with Steve, which was great. And, you know, there are people who are walking around doing wholesale, doing hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, and they're looking, what, six to 10%? Right. That's, what, their margin that's is. what they all said. It was between six to 10%. You know, they were a multi million dollar seller, but they're actually only selling in, in profit six to 10%. Then you have traditional OA booksellers, or not. Oh, wait, books. So you have traditional online arbitrage sellers just buying, you know, just random products from Walmart or Target or other websites. And, you know, those, those sort of margins are, you know, 15 ish percentage. There are people on Bookmind who like turn down 50% ROI. They're just like, it's too low, you know, 50% yeah. ROI. Like, uh, I don't, you know, it's just too low for me. And the reality is that we're kind of honestly, you know, very privileged in, in the fact that I think books are just this weird category where people are willing to spend a lot of money for books, but then also, feel like they don't have very much value on the tell end when they get rid of them. So it's just this weird category where you, you can sell books for a lot of money, but they can also get extremely undervalued very quickly, which is why Bookmine is able to find them for you. But um, profit minimum. So for me, for, for it to be worth my time, I'd say, you know, $10. If you can make $10 profit on a book and you think it'd be over 50% ROI, that's good. You should tell you, tell her your, your expectations based upon how much money you have though, right? Because you always have two resources. You have capital, and you have time. So in the beginning, when Victor and I were doing this, we had more time yep. than we had capital. So, you know, we might turn down the $10 profit book at 60% ROI because, you know, we had an extra hour to source and to spend the limited money we have. But now it gets to the point where, you know, we, we have uh, enough capital that we have to, that we don't just want sitting in a bank account. We'd much rather have a $10 profit, 50% ROI than just turn it down. So one tip that I can give you guys is if you are new and you're kind of wanting to just put your feet in there, you know, dip your feet in, you can sort these by you by price. We have a used price ladder. If you only want to buy books that are under, you know, $15 free shipping to your house, I mean, you, you can buy them right here. These, I mean, you can look at all these books that have just gone down in price relative to their, their past. And you brought it down to less than $10, Joji, and there's 1,400 books just like that. There's, there's 1,400 books that are under $15 right now. And so, $15, yeah. yeah, you know, beyond that, if you just want to look at the absolute cheapest prices, you can even click this used price and just sort by literally, you know, most expensive down or to least expensive up. And so we've got books starting at $4.20. You can buy a book for $4.80, $4.95. So, Cause th th that's the actual price shipped. 
That's, that, that, that's to your house or to your prep center. And yeah, so we really crazy. dug into Amazon's data to give us that, to give actually give us that information. Absolutely. So um, I don't know. I hope that answered your question. I would say, well, I mean, Victor, what's your, I would say at least $10 profit. Yeah, no, no, same thing. $10, $10 profit, um, uh, you know, and I, I'm looking at a 50% ROI. So I, I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and then you, some people would say, well, $10 is not that much, but also you have to remember, I'm not driving anywhere. I'm not lugging around books. I'm not having to carry them. I'm not having to go yeah, to the UPS store. This, this, all I'm doing is clicking a button and buying it. And the rest of it just happens. It's like, it's like, it's magic. <laughs> right. Because Amazon already automates so much of it. I mean, they, they yeah. already do all of the holding of your inventory for you. They do all the shipping to the customer. They deal with customer support. They deal with returns. The only thing you got to do is get the book from wherever you bought it from to Amazon's warehouse. And the only, uh, the only, you know, sort of gap between that is either you being the one that ships it to the Amazon warehouse or a prep center doing it for you. So, you know, on, in, in, um, Victor's Facebook group and also my YouTube channel. We have an uh, interview and we've talked with, you know, Frank from Little Owl, the awesome prep, the prep center. center. Yeah, right. And then we yep. also have uh, Shannon Mann, Central Virginia Prep, which is a prep center I use. They charge, so Shannon charges $2.25 to get a book received, open the package, make sure it looks good, flip through the pages, make sure the spine's good. You know, there isn't like coffee stains on it. And then they put a label on it, boom, they get it sent to the warehouse. So the point is like, the only thing that is left to automate is that inner that intermediate part, which is getting the book after you buy it to Amazon's warehouse. And the prep center is amazing because it saves it's, you so much time. That's great, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> they they oh, just yeah. they save your inventory and they send it. Yeah. Right? So, any case, let me, let me say, guys, right now, in yeah. my honest opinion, unless you're a brand new seller and you don't have any experience selling books, this won't apply to you. You know, you're going to want to start with thrifting and learning the basics. I'm sure. Uh, I was going to say Keepa, Joji. When I think of Keepa, I think of Joji's face. Um, <laughs> yes. I think that you guys would be absolutely crazy if you have any experience selling books to not go and try this out. So if you go over to rakeandprofit.com slash gold rush, um, I know you got to, I, I, I copied that from your sales page because yeah, yeah, I, like, I got to use that as my link. That's you awesome. can get 10 day, uh, 10 days free trial, right? So yeah. they're not going to, they're not going to get charged, right? right. No charge. I charge. So put in your information, use this for 10 days. I mean, go crazy, buy a bunch of books, make some yeah. money. And if you go through the link on this page and use the code Steve, all caps, Steve, you can't spell yeah. that wrong. You're going to save $30 off your first month. Plus this link is going to bring you to a little bonus page where I created a bunch of bonuses. So you're actually going to get 50 book replans that I'm going to give you that you could replenish. Wow. On Great. Amazon and eBay, I literally went through with can my team. We spent a lot of show time. It? Can you show the screen if you don't mind? Because I just stopped sharing. Would you mind yeah, sharing? Yeah, because yeah. you put together an awesome, like you're really trying to help people out. Like, yeah. you're like tons of bonuses. I was like, Steve, you're you're going kind of crazy. That's a lot of to, but you're really excited about it, and you're yeah, giving away yeah, awesome. It is a lot of awesome. Yeah, I mean, he, he sees the potential. I mean, as an affiliate, I do get a commission, but I always think like, how can I add more value? So I just don't look like one of these guys trying to sell you on something. So I put together a page, guys, if you go to rakeandprofit.com slash gold rush, this will share with you all the bonuses at no extra cost. I'm going to give you guys 50 high profit book replens. These are books. Literally this book replen list alone can make you a lot of money, not only on easy uh, on, uh, Amazon, but also we gave you a direct link to eBay to buy these on eBay to see if they're at the price that you want. So that's a whole entire Google sheet right there that you can literally get. Now give us 24 to 48 hours. You're going to have to email us at support at rake and And we'll, my team will message that out to you. We just have to verify you got the free trial with Bookmine, but that's bonus one. Bonus two, I put together a training that shares how to hire virtual assistants nice. to be able to either A, buy items from eBay to Amazon using Flipmine and different softwares or Bookmine, yep. um, Amazon to Amazon. Because I'm mostly eBay to Amazon, so this is a training that's a little bit applied to that. But you could use the same, all the principles to buy books from Bookmine, have them yep. shipped to a prep center, have a virtual assistant do it for you, and you literally don't have to touch it. I would like to prereq prerequisite by saying, you know, it's not beginner friendly. Like I wouldn't recommend doing that right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> right. But this is a really good training. Yeah, absolutely. There's and then more. last but not, yeah, <laughs> last but not. Awesome. Yeah, go for it. Well, again, guys, I'm really just trying to over deliver. Yeah. Joji and I, we have a six, uh, a six week Keepa 
I'm calling it a crash course, but it's a training we did in one of our uh, memberships. We're going to give that to you guys for free and it's going to walk you through. It's about six hours of content. Wow. I'm going to get, you don't have to go through all of it, but if you really want to study and learn, keep on understand how to price and buy right and merchant price and FBA. And I mean, Joji and I, we went psycho. So we did go psycho <laughs> for a while. <laughs> If you do uh, get book mine and go through my link, you know, I just want to add a little extra value. So that's my spiel. Um, again, you know, I, I hate the whole pitching thing, but I just want to add value to you guys and Absolutely. make sure you succeed long term. So thanks for letting me uh, share that, Joji. Absolutely. It's awesome. I mean, you can tell we're excited, but we got our merch. I mean, I wear it everywhere. So far, yeah. no one in the wild has asked me about it, but I'm, one of these days, someone will ask me about it. So <laughs> I'm just, we're just pumped. We're excited about it. And um, yeah. There's, there's so much here to grow. Join uh, Victor's Facebook group for free. I mean, watch my YouTube videos. I mean, there's tons of free value. Even Steve, obviously, there's so much free value, right? So even though we think long-term BookMind is an awesome solution for you, you might not be there yet, but it will be there for you guys when you are ready. So Steve. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. Um, thank you guys so much for sharing. I'm sure we're going to do a bunch more of these. Um, and I'm sure there's some stuff we left out and different things we could, you know, do more in the future, but this is only right. the beginning guys. This is step one. Um, you know, just like a knack 1980 said, I bought a ton of books for under 10 that will bring me in over $10 in profit over a hundred percent ROI. So I think that's um, Arena, right? exactly. Arena. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is just the beginning guys take advantage of this. You know, I really think of this as the gold rush because you know, they're new. There's not, they don't have a million users. Right. Um, right. That's another good point, Steve. We're a brand new software. We don't have a thousand users yet. And so there's a ton of opportunity just sitting there. You know, sometimes the hour goes by and, and people aren't buying the books that I'm seeing them like, wow, they're great. So yeah, there's, there's still a lot of opportunity uh, for anyone uh, to join now. And by the way, can you, can you just let me share my screen one more time? We forgot one of the, coolest things that we just literally updated did, for did, you today. Go for it. Yeah. Are, are, yeah. Do you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. We also just added the eBay link today. So essentially we're trying to find books on Amazon that are undervalued, but oftentimes those books are also listed on eBay. And so what you could do is you could also just click the eBay link. So let me reset back to normal. You could, could click the eBay link. And if there's anything on eBay that's lower than that current price on Amazon, I'll show you. So you can actually see that the landed price here is, you know, this says 36.98 is the cheapest price on Amazon. We're looking for a similar price to that and you can see no matches were found. So we're actually just basically to say, you know what, also take a look at eBay because potentially this book could be on eBay for a little bit cheaper as well. And so you might also want to buy it there. So anyway. And, and we added it specifically for you guys because I know there's a lot of people doing eBay to Amazon. And, and so we, okay. we we went back and, and coded it into BookMind to, to add that feature in. Just yep. to hop out this community. So here, here's a great example of it, right? This is just like the fourth book down. If we look at the Keepa graph, let's just first make sure it's undervalued. You can just kind of see that over the last year, the lowest use price has been 23 and it's now undergoing a repricing war. It's gotten down to BookMind says all in price at 12.45. But if I click eBay, you actually see there's actually one for $9 and 14 cents. So, I mean, yeah. there you guys go. I mean, there's, there's even more value there to get it $3 cheaper, which just means that now this book becomes a little bit more profitable. So anyways, I just want to share that because Somehow we didn't mention that whole this whole time. I don't know how we didn't, but yeah, that was that was a big thing. We worked on it the last few weeks to make sure we we uh, brought that out today. Um, while we got on, Steve, to can you show the chat? Can you can you show the chat? Look at how excited people are, right? Because yeah. these are yeah. <laughs> just, just, just look at just click on them. Just click on a few. Yeah, Can't believe you nearly skip unveiling the new yeah. great news. Oh, great man. news, yeah. This Fantastic. is this is awesome. Yeah. So yeah, these are all book my members. And you know, you guys might be thinking if you're not a book my member, you might be thinking we're paying them, but we're we're really not. We're just like <laughs> people who use us are super excited about it. Uh, yeah. So basically now, adding 42 million potential more books to to book mine. Anyway, go, go ahead, Steve. Now I need you guys to do me a favor, okay? Because I want to give away um the two fifty dollar uh payouts for folks. Yeah, um, just to show our appreciation. We're always trying to add value and appreciate everybody hanging out. So I need you to choose one word that you want them to say in the comments. I have a feeling, you know, I know what word you're going to want them to say, but have them say one word. And if they comment that word, we're going to go through and pick a couple lucky winners. And we'll just scroll through without looking. And um, you guys will just have to reach out to me at support at rakeandprofit.com. Take a picture of inside your account. So I know it's abso absolutely you. And Give us right. your PayPal. So what's the word you want them to say, guys? Picture. Go I, ahead. 
I think we should call, we say book mine. I think you should yeah. say book yeah. mine. Yeah. Yeah. Book right. mine, of book course. Mine. <laughs> say book mine. Okay. All right. So all you have to do, we're not going to make you do anything crazy and do yeah. jumping jacks and somersaults and a double back flip off a diving <laughs> board. If you comment the word book mine in the comments right now, we're going to scroll through and I guess I'll do a quick scroll maybe to start and then we could have, you know, Joji or Victor do a scroll and pick a we're, winner. But uh, we're, we're a little bit biased because we know some of the book. My members fine. Are. I'll do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We're a little bit biased. So that's pretty awesome, right. Steve. Did that so I, want, I want you to do a countdown. It could be from five to seven, whatever countdown you want. And I'm going to be I'm literally just scrolling up and down right now. I'm okay. going crazy. Right, scrolling. Go. Three, yeah. two. One, boom, we on. And all right, we have Jim. Jim. Yeah. Do you know Jim? Jim, I was going to try to pronounce yeah, the last name, but I was going to slaughter it. So, familiar. Know, but Jim, Jim, hey, congrats, man. Um, That's awesome. What I need you to do, Jim, if you can, is uh, take a screenshot from inside your account, and I'm going to actually – tag your account right now and give that to my team. Uh, send us an email at support at rakeandprofit.com and make sure that you send the link to your channel as well, even though, even if you're not creating yeah. content, so I can match it with you and uh, send us your PayPal information and we will send you over that 50 buckaroos. That's awesome, Steve. Awesome, man. So much value in this, in this uh, live. It is. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you guys as well. You guys have come a long way over the years and putting out Thank the you. software. And, you know, for the folks who don't know, if you're like, oh, I don't know if this is like really going to make money for me, for anyone who's a seasoned seller knows it's crazy not to be using it. If you're new and you don't get it, keep right. selling. You'll get it eventually. Once you get yeah. enough, you know, once you're in the game long enough, you're going to see the value of this. Once, once you understand Keepa, you'll be like, whoa. <laughs> This yeah. is insane. No, yeah. Insane. When people when people say that, that that they don't get it yet, I'm like, oh, it's because you're a new seller. Like, if you were if you were actually selling, you would understand how how okay. amazing Bookmine is. Okay. All right, you yeah. guys can comment Bookmine as many times as you want right now because yeah. we're going to use another Bookmine. Bookmine. <laughs> break YouTube right now. I'm going to probably get kicked off <laughs> violation <laughs> or whatnot. You know, they might Keep go after. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> All right, I want you guys to give me a countdown. I'm scrolling. All right, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, you do seven, it. six, <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, zero. Oh, there we go. All right. Isaac. 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 Let's go. Isaac. Hey, you guys can buy quite a few books with, with 50 bucks. So. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. What should Actually, they be able to bit. turn that 50 bucks into? That's what I want to know. 150. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, like I said, you could, you could sort by cheapest price books. You could buy five books for under 10 bucks and easily probably make $10 profit on each of those books. So, and that's just the first go around, right? They go, the goal is you guys want to build a snowball right now, Victor and I, like we've been doing this for a long time. So we got big snowballs, but, but a lot of people who are already using Bookmine, they're already starting to build their snowball. And if you guys buy 10 bucks a day, there's no way you don't get a hundred thousand in revenue. So, and we'll help you do it. We'll, we're, yeah. we're there. We're active members. We're active in the community we're, we want, we want to help you out. So like, it's not like you buy the software and good luck. We, we yeah. are, we are with you through that, through your journey. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yep. Man. Well, this was so much fun. You guys go, um, give Joji and Victor, um, a follow as well. And the show notes afterwards, give me a little bit of time. I'll, I'll put the, uh, well, Joji Davenport, you can look him up on YouTube, uh, but your Facebook group, Victor, yeah. I'll be yeah. sure to seasonal book arbitrage. Yeah. It's my Absolutely. Facebook group. Yeah. seasonal book arbitrage. Okay. Right. Just, yeah. uh, Absolutely. So how long is your offer, yeah. Steve? Ongoing? Yeah. So if you got, well, I'm not sure about his bonuses that I might be fast action stuff, but if you guys use code Steve, all cap Steve, then you guys get your first month off or not your first month, you get $30 off your first month. And the reason why it's just the first month is because also, you know, it's very expensive for us to run the software and we, you know, we want, we, we want you guys to have something special because Steve is special to us and his community is special to us. So we got something there for you guys, but yeah, I mean, $30 off the first month, I think it's really, really an awesome deal. And um, yeah, you really can't lose. try so, it. If you don't make at least $99, then cancel and, and yeah. you know, okay. But there, yeah. there's just so much opportunity. I don't know how you couldn't make make that money back and more. Yeah. Um, and then Jan says it's true. Joji and Victor are both excellent teachers. So there you go. But guys, I'm a high school teacher. I'm like actually a high school teacher. So if you guys watch my videos, I'm like literally like a teacher, yeah. like showing you in school how to make money. It's actually pretty cool. 
And Liz says, how about Akiba training? Yeah, if you go over to the BookMind YouTube channel, we've got a playlist called the BookMind Academy. That's Lily Akiba training, Lily step-by-step -step videos, Victor and I there teaching you with plenty of examples. So just go to BookMind YouTube channel and, and it's all there for you. Yeah, Betty, I'm not going to be taking the bonus offer away anytime soon. I want to, you know, I want to really support these guys and, you know, drive a lot of traffic and give a lot of value to folks. So the bonuses are there to help you. That's really it. So I'm not going to take those away and I don't want to rush anybody into making a decision. So right. take okay. your time. Yeah. We're all in this for the long term. I mean, right. we're, we've got a long term relationship with Steve, uh, Joji and me have been working together. We're, we're, we're all going to continue to be working this together. So and there's yeah. plenty of updates. We just dropped a bomb on you guys. You guys didn't even realize we just dropped the eBay link. Hey, that's a bomb. That, that was one of the freaking profit channel, baby. Yeah. First Boom, we did. No one else knows. Yeah. No one else knows. Yeah. And then um and then also we've got plenty of updates coming in, into the future. We've already got like a year planned out in the future. And that's what's awesome about software is that you've got two people, me and Victor, who are a teacher, like you know, he's not actually like a real he's not a public school teacher, but he's a really great teacher, right? You have two people who are great teachers who are here for the long haul, who are updating the software and making consistent content to help you guys out, right? All the other softwares are just kind of like that. They're just kind of sitting there and just existing. Been but, yeah. but anyways, we're really excited, uh, really excited about this. Absolutely. Well, I love it. Any, any final words that you'd like to share for folks who are going through the trial and experimenting with it and uh, just any last, you know, pieces yeah. of advice to make sure people uh, have some success and if it's a good fit, make sure it's a good fit for them? Absolutely. Just go slow. Uh, like I said, consume the free content. If you guys consume the free content, we know we'll get you there and then you'll be ready to do it. And other than that, the new gold rush is here. So <laughs> hey. uh, for, me, for me, it's be consistent, right? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're here for you. We've hopped out hundreds of people and we're ready to help you guys out. So anybody right. who hasn't joined, you should, we are, we're, we're there for you. I mean, We've never not helped out people. So, so you know, DM us, um, you know, start with BookMind. We, we will be there for you. So, yeah, uh, we'll make sure that. you use this, this link here. <laughs> gold That's Rush. Cool. I get, I get yeah, Gold that. Rush. Good time. Yeah, I love it. All right, it. guys. Much love. Thank you so much, Joji and Victor, for coming on. It was a pleasure hanging out with you guys Thank in you. Miami recently. Thanks for yeah, sharing. that was awesome. And, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in another video. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll do another one. So, thank you, Sounds everybody. Good. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Later. Bye-bye.